Blake throwing the alley oop and Kennedy with authority. 108 points for the Newcastle Eagles, and it is a step in the right direction for them. All the way to the rim. What a move! It's game time. We're back in the Eagles' nest again this week, where our hosts will be hoping to double down after last week's win over Plymouth. Tonight, they take on the Surrey Scorchers. Very good evening to you. It's our first look at Surrey this season here on Friday Night Basketball. Looking forward to seeing them. Looking forward to catching up with these two. Drew Laska, Kieran Achara. Good to see you both. And Drew, this place, it's fair to say, was absolutely jumping last week. It wasn't just the fact the Eagles got the win. It was the manner of the victory, wasn't it? Oh, it was awesome to be a part of. And it's just funny how quickly narratives change in sport, right? A team that's going through a carousel of players, a slow start. Now, all of a sudden, they've won three out of their last five and given these fans something to cheer about. Yeah, because it was a tough start to the season for Newcastle, but they are starting to turn it around. Are they showing you enough, Kieran, to make you believe that they're contenders for silverware this season? I'm not going to jump straight in straight away. You know, I seen even last week they had a great win against Bristol, and then they followed up with a really poor performance against Sheffield Sharks. So I want to see a little bit more consistency, and tonight's the big night to kind of show that. So if Newcastle's start to the season has been mixed, how would you describe Surrey's start? There's a few words going in my mind right now. I'm going to go with underwhelming. You know, I think they've got to quite a poor start, losing the likes of Andrew Lawrence, the other big players, Taylor Ogundengbe. They've been finding their feet you know and I genuinely believe they have the talent but they've got a lot more to prove you both if I remember correctly had Surrey as your surprise team when you made your picks at the start of the season so I guess in a way Drew they're, they're surprising you but for the wrong reasons yeah I mean I saw this team in, in preseason here to be exact and they look phenomenal but that team that I saw in preseason is completely different from that roster we see out there what is the main reason for that is it injuries has that been the biggest hurdle Yes, yeah, injuries from the most important position, a point guard position. And I see their slow start similar to the Leicester Riders, right? They lose Geno Crandell, they're off to a slow start. They lose Andrew Lawrence early, and they're off to a slow start. The point guard is the most, uh, is, is the most, is the best position in basketball, most important, sorry. And when you got a point guard, you struggle. You can call it best if you want. I was going to yeah. argue that. I was <laughs> yeah, going to dispute that. His <laughs> eyes were ready to roll that one. Sorry, Kieran. It has been a difficult start to the season for them. They're rock bottom. Looking for their first win of the campaign. They could pick that up here tonight. Newcastle, speaking of picking up, are starting to get going. Two wins in the league and that win in the cup that Kieran mentioned, but they are a long way off the pace. There is hope, ladies and gents, for the rest of the BBL as tabletop as the Lions suffered their first defeat of the season up in Sheffield. That was last Friday night. Bristol and Manchester, they both have five wins from eight. Leicester, Cheshire and Sheffield, they all have four wins apiece. So let's take a look at Newcastle in a little bit more detail. And very excited to see a player that uh, we didn't see last week, a player that you know incredibly well, Kieran. He was out through injury last week. But Kyle Johnson going to be playing tonight. And we'll uh, key in on him in just a little bit. Denzel Ubiaro, formerly uh, of Plymouth. And uh, he was looking very strong uh, with shooting. Certainly was in a warm-up a little bit earlier. The skipper Darius Defoe. How many seasons, Drew? Number 19. Number 19. There we go. Justin Everett. He's a six foot nine American. He signed a few days before last week's win and uh, he hit the ground running, impressing us in that win against Plymouth. Fellas, as we found out quite a lot this year, a week is a long time in politics. What about the BBL, Drew? All these new faces at Newcastle, particularly in the last three or four weeks. What's a realistic timeline to expect them to all gel together and be cohesive? Well, in, in sport, well, if you, it depends on who you ask. If you ask them the fans, they want it to happen immediately. Like, but, but really, it takes time. That's why you have a preseason, four or five weeks to give it guys a chance to build camaraderie off and off on the court. Okay. So are they going to have a preseason now? <laughs> 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 the, the next month is their preseason. Okay, there we'll we go. Put the asterisks again <laughs> over uh, November. A player that suddenly has uh, absolutely rolled and didn't need much of a preseason. Javi and Hamlet, he stole the show last week, didn't he? He racked up 31 points, eight boards, seven assists. And we talked about this place jumping, Drew. He was uh, absolutely the catalyst for that, wasn't he? And he talked about on the BBL show this week about how coach Mark Studel was saying, get the ball to the second and third side. And it benefited him because I felt like in the past, the ball was getting really sticky with him and allowed the defense a chance to load up. 
like the plug he got in there for the BBL show. That was smooth. He's the X Factor last week for the Eagles side. How will he try and influence the game tonight, Kieran? I, I think just do what he does best, and that's being aggressive. You know, I, I said that he's the player who gets his assist by being so aggressive that he just sucks the defense and he has no other option but to pass. Now, Justin Everett didn't seem, as we said, to need much time uh, to adjust, imposing himself, Kieran, at both ends of the floor. Yeah, I like him. He seemed like a very solid player had some experience as well but you know efficient player who rebounds the ball that's exactly what the Eagles needed and Drew you talked about the Eagles need to have a bit more muscle a bit more physicality is Justin Everett the answer there? well he proved to be last week like I said they need to defend the paint and score in the paint he proved he can do that and more as he showed us the whole repertoire last week looking forward to seeing Carl Johnson your old international roommate you were telling us here yeah I've got a lot of great great stories and great <laughs> memories with Kyle Vastly experienced. He won a title, as you're seeing there, with Hamilton last season that he won playing with the current Lions head coach, Ryan Schmidt. How do you see him, Kieran, setting uh, into this Eagles lineup? I think he's quite a self-aware player. He, you know, he's, he's been around. He knows he knows the game. So he'll bring energy. He'll, he'll, a good offensive rebounder. Runs the floor really well. And just do whatever it takes for to to find a spot within this team. Let's take a look at Surrey. All change for them this season. A new coach in Lloyd Gardner, former Giants head honcho of course and a very high profile GM to boot more of whom shortly they've been busy personnel wise as well Quincy Taylor returning for his third stint in at the BBL very exciting guard Padiet Wang in pressing and Kieran you tipped him as your one to watch coming into this season what excites you about him I just love the way he plays he plays above the rim he's aggressive he's fearless you know he's an exciting player to watch reminds me a lot of myself in my, in my younger play <laughs> okay <laughs> when you look at him do you see Kieran Achara <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> He's averaging over 50 points uh, per game. He leads the team in assists as well. He's very much the focal point of this offense, Drew. What kind of offense is Lloyd Gardner trying to run here? Well, we know Lloyd Gardner likes to move the ball around. He likes to ping the ball, get ball movement. As I use that terminology with Coach Doodle, get the ball to the second, second and third side. Quincy Taylor, as I say, back in the BBL. You must have had some tussles with him over the years, Drew. I mean, have I? The last time that I faced this guy, he hit a game winner on us in overtime. Still hurting? It still hurts. You've had experience too, then. I've been there, done that too. The <laughs> game winner against us at the Surrey Sports Park as well. He, 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 he can play. He can play the game of basketball. Got the game winning T-shirt by the side of it. Charleston Dobbs, another one of the American contingent at Surrey. And talk about well-traveled. He's plied his trade in Colombia, El Salvador, Jordan, Luxembourg, Hungary, Georgia, and most recently, Albania. I mean, that is well traveled. How much of an advantage is that, is that breadth of experience? Well, I'm guessing if you're soaking in all these different cultures, you, you, you possibly can adjust to, to the way of the styles of playing and, 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 and embracing in culture, but at the same time, you know, there, it has its negatives as well. True. do you see, is it a positive or a negative that he's been around the world? For me, it's a negative because Surrey needs to build continuity, right? And so... It, looking at his resume, it don't look like he's going to be here long, does it? <laughs> That's a fair point. By the way, he also said he's looking forward when he signed for Surrey that, to work on his English accent. So maybe if you chat to him a little bit later on, you can test him out. I got and See him. how that's working out. Lloyd Gardner is in his first season, as we've seen. How does a coach effectively handle such a tough start to the season when they've lost so many on the bounce? I think he just has to stick to his game plan and his, his belief in himself. You know, as, as a coach, you know, you maybe start question a, a couple of things question a philosophy but he he believes in the in the, the way he plays he knows he's done it's proven at manchester he just has to find a way to get the team to believe in that too well he's taken on this new role in surrey and a few weeks ago the former team at gb skipper and recently retired dan clark joined the club as gm earlier this week we caught up with them both retirement came across my mind I think a few years ago. I mean the decision in itself came about from the point of view that I'm quite at peace with where I'm at in life and what I've done in my career. I've had lots of great memories, lots of great times playing basketball but it just made sense at this point in time to walk away from the game you know, on my own terms. Clark for another three, Dan Clark, second three of the game. Lloyd definitely influenced a lot because I really really enjoy working with Lloyd. I think we share a lot of the same values when it comes to basketball. You know we've known each other pre-Manchester for a long time. Dan was, you know, thinking about potentially trying to get into more off-court roles and some conversations that we'd had in Manchester about preparing him for that life. And that came up in conversation with Gavin Baker, the, the managing director here at the Sports Park. 
And, um, you know, at the point Gavin said, well, you know, we, we might need somebody in that sort of role here. And those first meetings I had, as Lloyd said, with Gavin, I had really positive vibes from that. Something that I've looked at getting into for a number of years. It does touch on the performance side of basketball, but it also looks at other aspects of the business. You know, as a player, you get to see certain things, but you don't really understand the ins and outs of how things work and, and what the process is and the decisions we make. I, I would say our working relationship's good. It was probably hard in Manchester just because of the relationship we had before. So this perhaps in many ways is slightly easier. And as we said, like we see the game very similar. We know what each other's thinking. I think that obviously there's a point where we're gonna to have to challenge each other, make sure we are on the same page about getting things better and, and out of our comfort zone. I think that the fact that we have a relationship that we can challenge each other is, is a positive because we're both trying to get the same things. My view on Surrey Scorchers as a team was one with a lot of potential. You know, it's a great place to come and to come and be a professional basketball player. But I think, and it's also been a great place for you know, especially young British players, but also young players in general to really start off their career. Um, you know, we've got examples of like Josh Steele, who's with us this year again. Examples like that, I think, are really useful for sorry to have to you know, when we, for example, when we're recruiting players and things like that, to explain to them, yeah, you, you know, you come here, you're going to get a chance, you're going to be able to perform at an elite level and and put yourself in that spotlight that every player wants to be in. You know, the big thing for us is just getting better every day. That's where we're at at the moment, getting better on the floor, off the floor, and yeah, just keep improving and keep being better. You know, I think that we're all, as a collective, believe when we can get everyone on the floor, we've got, you know, talent to win games. And so I think that the turnaround is there. It's a matter of when it's going to happen rather than it. And we'll be delighted to get the win in front of the Sky Sports cameras. So yeah, hopefully you can be our inspiration. Kieran, you know Dan really well, of course. That appointment is based on a number of things, all built around his experience. There's the player recruitment, his knowledge of European players, and the inspirational element as well. Everything he's achieved is going to be a huge inspiration to his new players. Yeah, definitely. He has the, he has the full package, and he also has the willingness to learn. You know, Dan was always business-minded. He was always thinking about other things. He was a very curious person, so I'm, I'm really happy to see him getting that opportunity. And I, I'm, I'm glad to see. I, I know he will grow. He will grow into be a great GM. It's great to see him staying in the BBL as well. Now, if we look at the team comparisons, the team head-to-head, -head, you wonder why Surrey uh, winless dead last. Well, they've got the worst ranked defense in the BBL. They are dead last in offense as well. But also, Kieran, they're the worst defenders for turnovers. And Newcastle, not that far behind. Yeah, and this is a key point for me to know. I'm looking at matchups protecting the ball, you know, I, I think that if they can kind of get those easy scores, I know both teams have been really struggling with that, but if they can find a way to get those easy picks and get those easy layups, it'll bring, build some confidence. Newcastle putting up the points last week, but Surrey will identify the 96 points that Plymouth put up them and, and see that there are fallibilities here defensively. Yeah, and they got to get better on that side of the ball. And for me, it's the help side defense, which I watched over another couple of weeks, is the others, while the ball's live, they're relaxing. So they got to be more engaged off the ball. As you can probably see, we are very close to tip-off here in Newcastle. For so many years, Newcastle have been the great entertainers of the BBL. And let's see if they can keep up how they played last week as we tip off for just a few moments' time. Welcome to the Virtue Motors Arena. It's game time! Newcastle Eagles versus the Surrey Scorchers. Know our name.
Friday night basketball at a packed Virtue Motors Arena. This should be a thoroughly entertaining affair, especially in the hands of your commentary team, Ant Rowe and Dan Routledge. Thank you very much, Nat. Yeah, it is. There's actually quite a lot riding on this. Newcastle in this spell where they've won a couple of games, got some home games coming up, they'll feel they can win. Uh, and then Surrey just desperate for a win of any sort. When we say this, it's so early in the season, but do we not feel that there's so much urgency now and these are must-win games? These are the two teams in the bottom of the league, out of the playoff contention. These are two teams that want to be in the top eight. Let's take a look at the uh, starting fives for today's game, starting with the Newcastle Eagles. We've seen Hamlet putting up 21 points a game. That's nine points more than second place Jamel Kennedy. They need to find some more offense around him. They do. It's a team that's struggling with offensive production, but Hamlet and Kennedy have been that consistency there. Kennedy on great form, not for much of the same for him tonight, but led by Hamlet. And if we have a look at the uh, Surrey Scorchers uh, lineup, signed Ryan Martin this week straight into the starting lineup with him. Wow, <laughs> that's it, Brom in the deep end. Let's see what he's got. Ryan Martin's return was last year back on British soil with London Lions. Now he gets to do it in the Surrey Scorchers jersey. And with Taylor in the backcourt and uh, the super athletic, super exciting Paddy at Wang uh, alongside him. They do have a lot more offensive firepower, uh, Surrey, than maybe they showed in the first couple of weeks of the season. We all just about picked Surrey as the surprise team. There's, there's still some something good underneath there they've just got to unlock it all there's a lot of season left as well Dan it's still very early stages yes they're 0-6 but look let's be frank they've played Leicester they've played Manchester they've played London it's been a pretty brutal schedule for them so far well the fives are out there and it will be Boban Jack Domney to jump it up against Jamal Kennedy and it is the Eagles who will get the opening possession of the game Is Defoe top of the key? Short Jack Domney with the rebound. Almost a imitation of the first play of this very game last week. That high looking jump shot there for Gareth Defoe doesn't knock it down on this occasion. And Jack Domney hands it back to one. Inside now to Jack Domney. Wasn't the greatest pass. He's just about kept it alive. Shot clock is late. Martin straight into the uh, Surrey lineup and straight on the scoreboard. Great save by Bob and Jack Domney and Ryan Martin, the new recruit. It feels so good to score an early bucket. I'm sure that will do his confidence the world of good. Kennedy wide open. Speaking of early buckets, he gets one with his first touch. Jamel Kennedy, he is on as good a storm as you're going to see. He has to be guarded from out there. Martin now from behind the arc. Five quick points for Ryan Martin. Wow, this could be the signing of the season. Maybe it's a premature judgment by me, but boy, what a good start. Well, he's on pace for 200 points a game right now. <laughs> Nice pass inside to Defoe, the extra kick. Kennedy, and the foul is called. And it is Kyle Carey who's committed it. Ah, disappointing look from Kyle Carey there as well. Relatively good defense there, rotating well, and just too much contact there. The dying seconds of that shot clock. Going, going to the baseline, but getting all the way to the line and out of bounds. Unfortunate turnover there from David Coyne, and he's a guy as well that they're going to need to look for a little bit more of creativity. I think when the offense is struggling, he's the guy with that ability and the bit court vision to get his teammates involved. His Wang knocked away, and that will stay with the Scorchers. Just playing basketball with your head. Darius Defoe doesn't jump there and try and block it. He moves his feet, puts his body in a good position, and he's got that timing with the hands there. Here's Taylor. Too low on that Johnson with the rebound. Hamlet driving in, slapped down from Wang, and the foul is called. It's a good take from on Hamlet there and Paddy at Wang, a guy you'd want to stay on the floor if you're looking for 
well, highlights, but also offensive production. He's going to the score, but as you see, that swipe down of the ball there, early foul for him. He's got to be caught careful now the remainder of this half. Spent a lot of time on the free throw line last week, and he was, he was just about to say very effective with it. But uh, off the back of the iron with his first attempt, he has been shooting best part of 89% from the free throw line this season. Well, he has the ability to get to the free throw line, which is a skill one in itself. What he's done, he's picked up an early foul on one of the key players in the opposition as well. It's good movements, he's, he's attacking the rim positively. Wang, uh, it was a 25-foot uh, shot. Unfortunately, he took it from 27 feet and it fell two foot short. Yeah, and it looks like the moment when this is a team that have the least amounts of points per game. Two air balls so, so far from the three-point line. Gotta find their rhythm. Oh, miscommunication there. They got lucky. Because Khan was expecting Johnson to go back towards the lane. It would have been a turnover. But Martin didn't see it. Just deflected off him and out of bounds. It's Kennedy with the throwdown. Wow, it was a really quick that pull. He put the ball in play and Jamel Kennedy just takes advantage of everyone else's complacency. It's Wang. Feeding it into Jack Domney. Nice pass, good finish. Just done really well there to collect that ball. Bobbling around and composure. Nice finish. Well, Drew... Three minutes, uh, Drew Laskers joined us in commentary. Three minutes into the game, and it's on the sort of pace of scoring that we saw last week. Well, that's what the fans come out to see, right? We like a fast-paced game as Wayne gets to the basket there. But the thing that I'm locked in tonight is the discipline from both teams. Karen talked about it at the top of the show. Both teams turn over the ball more than anybody in the league. So can they keep this team, this game tidy and clean up? Johnson for three, back iron, and Wang rises high. Good athleticism as well, Wang, between two Newcastle Eagles players there. Here's Martin, driving hard, getting all the way to the rim and finishing seven points already. For Ryan Martin. He's done so well there. He's sized up the defender Johnson. You can tell he wants to get back to that right hand. It was a dribble left behind the back. And as soon as he's got the defender on his hip, he knows he's got the advantage. Good finish. Here's the foe for three. Rebound Martin. In the corner is uh, Carey, and it doesn't go. Hamlet does an excellent job there to remain active and just tip that away from Jack Donnelly, who was going to rebound and put that one back. And that's someone who's really improved their game from the outside. Kyle Carey shooting 50% this season after shooting 35 last. So it's great to see his growth from behind the arc. Chance Johnson driving hard. Just got enough to squeeze that in. It's a tough play there. And Johnson this time getting his own back on the Surrey Scorchers defense. Martin, under pressure from Kennedy, gets it away to Jack Domney, who tosses it in. Already improving their offense is Martin. Didn't have to even shoot the ball there. It attracted way more attention from the defense, and therefore his teammate, Boban Jack Domney, is open. Well, they've got 13 points on the board. Already as Hamlet drives to the rim, but just enough uh, attention from Jack Domney to make him uh, miss that. Scorchers, I was about to say, lowest scoring team in the league, 73 points per game. They have 13 in five minutes here. His Wang, nice finish, got it up quick and in off the glass through the contact. He'll go to the line for the bonus. Sorry, Scorchers have been able to get to their spot again. Wang. Into his strong hand, right side, he can see, takes the contact there, and really nice finish from him. And guys, he's most one of the most exciting players we have in this league. He's flown under the radar because of the early struggles from the Surrey Scorchers, but every time I've watched this guy, his talent flies off the screen. Well, he 
used the word flies through very, <laughs> I think, correctly. I mean, he's a guy that he's sky high. He's on every single top ten play I see. Well, he might be again here. He's underneath. He's looking at the referee like he should have got a foul there. He's got nothing as a result. Oh, Wag absolutely hammers him out. <laughs> That's exactly what I was talking about. Get ready for five or six plays exactly like that from Wang where he comes from the weak side. And Cone, who thinks he has a wide open layup, he says, get that out of here. Wow, great energy and, you know, intent there to chase that down. Great play. Well, people sat on the baseline and look at panic there as the ball was whacked so hard at them. <laughs> Nice out of bounds play. Oh, Everett yeah. with his first touch against the lane. Everett's done few things wrong since putting on that Eagles jersey and again enters the game and automatically returns it with some points. Dominic looking for options, decides he'll go himself. Gets his own rebound, but there was a whistle in there, presumably on the shot. Uh, I thought he'd signal. Yeah, it is 34. It's a little slap down there on David Cohen. Excellent call. It's really loud in here. I don't know if the, the whistle was was not heard because it was kind of half players stopped half didn't. Boba and Chuck Dunley looking to be aggressive. Four points personal for him. He's two for two. Averages this year 6.6, and he's a guy as well. He shows glimpses of. Of, of that player, that, that British All-Star caliber player, and then other games, you know, you feel like they're, it's un underwhelming compared to some of his previous performances. But I think for him, consistency is key. If they can somehow unlock consistency, the Boban Jack Romney could be that, that diamond in the rough. Well, he goes one for two from the free throw line. You're right, though. There are some games where you go, wow, this guy's unguardable, and then other times. He gets in foul trouble or just doesn't seem to have it. Shot clock getting low for the Eagles. But Sumbru might have got a foul there. Yes, it is. Zero that's shown to the table. That's where David Cohen's really good, and that's what he needs to do. Shot clock's winding down. He's attacking. He's not looking to score the basketball himself, but what he does is he's able to suck the defense in there, and his, his teammates are open. And I talked about it last week that the Eagles um, are, are successful when Cohen is playing well. In their three wins, he's 11 from 15 from the three. So as Everett again gives the Newcastle Eagles what they need, points in the paint. Cuts the gap to four. Jeff Domney just trying to get that over Johnson, who gets a hand on it. Everett at the elbow, at the free throw line this time. Taylor trying to go to work, tough shot. Bowman rebound, he's on his own though. Well, they gave him the mid-range and he took it. Jack Dunley must not watch this. He's seen the scouting report or didn't watch the game from last week. Everett can score on all three levels from the three-point line, mid-range, and in the paint. He has to tighten up there. Dunley throws it straight to Everett. Mock for a transition three. Well, those are only ever good if they go in, those. Scorchers dodged the bullet there. It's another loose turnover from Jack Domney and Newcastle Eagles in the open floor are dangerous. There's an even looser turnover. And that was my point about both of these teams, that they they must show more discipline. That, you know, the thing that coaches cannot live with this unforced turnover. That turnover was not forced by the defense. That was just two guys that weren't on the same page. Well, they lost the ball in the advertising board. It's the other end. There we go. Well, it was an assist for Sentence. That's a nice little pub here. 
But you need the sponsors to like, oh, please roll yeah, under the board. The board. <laughs> I guarantee you they'll take it. Here's Hamlet. Looking into the post where a bit of a size mismatch there. Ever able to shoot over the Sunbro. And in play by White. Speed of carry down court. Easy towards the foul. Excellent at that in the open floor. Cole Carey. Two things you want from him, you want him to be effective in the open floor like he was there, attacking the rim, and also you want him spotting off of those corner threes. Good pick up for the Scorchers this summer. And what I love to see is an evolution of a player, right? Someone like Kyle Carey, when he first came in the league, on the top of the scouting report, it was to send him left. Couldn't even dribble with his left hand, but every year he's gotten into the lab, gotten a little bit better, and added to his game. And, and this year, he's come with the three ball. So, great, great for Kyle Perry. First free throw is good, right? I don't think there was uh, any type of summer basketball event that you didn't see him in the photos. Exactly. And he makes them both. Shelton coming into the game. Johnson will sit down. And these are the type of games that's dangerous for a team that's just now starting to get a little bit of success because you get comfortable and you got a team like Surrey who hasn't won a game and your mindset is, oh, this is an easy dub. So Newcastle got to be careful that you don't want to give Surrey too much confidence early. It's Kyle Johnson. Hamlin kicks out, Montford late in the shot clock, gets it away. And Shelton almost has the offensive rebound, but sorry, smother it away. Good defensive possession there from Scorchers. Good contested shot, made things difficult, and no second chance opportunity there for the Eagles. Wang looking to attack, gets into the key. Carey under pressure. That's a unnecessary foul there. Johnson with the push. To try and keep uh, Dobbs, I think it was, from getting the offensive rebound. And there's that discipline. That's as good as a turn over there. The team's going to lose possession here, and look at that. It's an easy call for the referee. And that's just a play where a guy doesn't have rhythm. He got off the plane, played his first game, and hasn't been fe been featured since. So Johnson just getting accustomed to the speed of the game. Carey gets out to Basumbro. He's going to fire up the three. That's short. Clyde Dobbs was in good position, but it was Shelton who came away with it. Top of the key, Hamlet. Just had enough to get that over the front of the rim. He is such a natural scorer. On that occasion, he knew it wasn't right to go to the rim. It was very clustered inside. Instead, he hits his spot and knocks it down. Little flat there from Johnson. Ten seconds left in the quarter here. Newcastle coming forward with Hamlet. He's almost lost the ball. He's going to have to heave from half court. He couldn't get control of the ball. Well, it was a good start from the Surrey Scorchers, but Newcastle Eagles have matched them here in the opening quarter. Just a basket separating these two sides. At the end of the first quarter, we're at the Virtue Motors Arena, where the Newcastle Eagles have 16 and the Surrey Scorchers 18. We will have the second quarter right after this break.
Welcome back to Newcastle, where the Eagles trail Surrey Scorchers by a couple here after 10 minutes. Surrey, who have possession to start us off, and it's Quincy Taylor dancing along the baseline. The Sumbro drive into the hole. Great rebound from Jack Domney, drops it in. Jack Domney's looked really active in this game so far. That's seven points personal for him. And Luke Basumru doing what he does best, attacking the rim. Five rebounds as well for Jack Domney. Just, oh, that's a little unlucky there from Taylor as he went after the loose ball. And he came away with it, but by legal means, yeah, he's just slapped him on the arm, hasn't he? Unfortunate too, because you can see his eyes didn't leave the ball. It's one of those ones where too much contact before it's deemed a foul. Johnson fires it up high. Shelton with the offensive rebound. Can't convert though. And Wang gets it second time around for the Scorchers. And that was great defense there by the Surrey Scorchers. Wang driving quickly to the hole. Johnson pushing the other way. Kyle Johnson, well, I think he thought a whistle was coming, so he tossed it up. It's like he was looking to initiate the body contact, and it didn't come to a little bit later, which stopped his elevation towards the rim. Banked in from Taylor has a little shrug there. <laughs> Sometimes they're not all drawn up by design. He'll take those first two points of the this evening. Uh, Johnson three off the mark. Concerning sign for Eagles though, no one's crashing the boards there on that occasion. Duke Selton a couple times with Duke Shelton and Everett on the court at the same time. You expect them to be dominant on the offensive glass. Taylor, oh, tough from Quincy Taylor. Wow, high degree of difficulty. Didn't need to use the bank shot this time. Used his dribble, sides up the defender, and knocks it down. And that was great defense by Colm, but you no, know, I've faced Quincy Taylor many times, and I'd say he's one, he has the best midi in our game. When he gets to that free throw line of those elbows, you could pretty much put two points on the court. Well, Surrey have. Uh, Opened up an eight point lead, so Newcastle have called a timeout earlier. Drew caught up with Carl Johnson, who's playing in Great Britain for the first time. Carl, you always desired to play in the British Basketball League. Why the intrigue? Why the intrigue? Um, honestly, I like the way that the British basketball is growing right now. And, um, you know, I've played for the national team for over a decade now, and to be able to come home and play in front of my family and friends, it means a lot to me. So, I'm just excited to be a part of it now and hopefully uh, for many more years to come. And the team seems to look much more settled on the court. How do you plan to integrate yourself tonight? Um, I just plan to play my brand of basketball, uh, leave it all on the court, um, help whatever way I can, try to be a leader out there, um, and try to give a spark whenever I get my minutes and try to help the team get a win. And as the team's ascending, what's the ceiling for this Newcastle Eagles squad? I think the ceiling can be very high. Um, but for me, I, it's an it's a everyday uh, try to get better approach. Um, there's a lot of talent in this group, and I think as long as we uh, keep putting the work in every day um, and gel together, I think we can do a lot of special things this year. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you. It is good to see a guy who's played 10 years or more for Great Britain playing in the uh, British Basketball League. But it is going to take him a little time to adjust to life on this team and find his role on this team, Drew. And, and find his role in this league, because this league is probably different from anything that he's ever been a part of. You know, this is a fast-paced league, and as you can see, a couple of instances where he didn't have his legs up underneath him as the foe hits his signature fadeaway there from the elbow. But I think he'll be fine. He's, he, he, he brings a steady head to this group and has played everywhere, as you mentioned. Taylor looking for room along the baseline and finding it reverse lane for Quincy Taylor. Well, just like that, the taps turned on for him. He had zero points. Started this quarter, now he has six. Good read from Taylor to steal that away. Carey spinning through, gets it to Jack Domney, who lost it 
behind the back. And Ant, you touched on earlier about no one crashing the glass for the Newcastle Eagles. And I always talk about energy and effort, those things that you can control. And right now, the Surrey Scorchers are winning in that category, winning the 50-50 balls, sacrificing their body. So Newcastle Eagles just has to turn it up a notch. Well, it spins into open space. Such a clutch player. His team's having a little bit of a wobble. He's like, okay, guys, don't worry. I'll get us there. Two back-to-back -back baskets from him. That one uh, kicked away. I won't reset the shot clock as it's at 16. Looking for the back door there, and David Cohen playing left back. No balls through on his watch. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I'll tell you later, Drew. Just head into town, man, you'll find out. He's uh, marked in the corner, tipped out of bounds. And Martin's had a great start to this game, had a real impact from the start. And, you know, it's always tricky when you integrate a new player and you put them right into the starting yeah. lineup. We saw he for London Lions last year and it didn't work out. But so far, it seems to be working out for Surrey. And what I like about that, too, is it has a positive effect on Jack Domney, who's, you know, he looks so much less pressure there that is all, all eyes on him. He's got a, another, you know, big in there to help him out. And, you know, seven points apiece for both of them. That's a really good producing Big man duel right now. Well, wow. Honey Wang playing the big man. He's uh, blocked another shot there. Gave it a little to Kenby Matumbo finger wag as well. Not coming anywhere near him again. Cohen fires up the three. What a shot. Wow, that's a fantastic shot there. Looked like Cohen in the gym in the summer working on his game, working against the Cones and fades away, step backs and hit the three. Here's Wang looking to reply off the mall. Sorry, just cannot quite get it together on the on that three-point line. One for seven so far this evening. Wang going after another block. This time he fouls to foe. Timeout called by the Surrey Scorchers with four minutes gone here in the second quarter. Newcastle Eagles. Cut the gap down to three, 23 points to 26. And speaking of new guys to league, one guy who's had quite an impact here in this second quarter, Quincy Taylor. Drew caught up with him early. Quincy, third stint with the Scorchers. What was the attraction for you this time around? Um, just the players, you know, I know a couple of the players on the team. Um, Teo, Kaylin's a coach now. So um, just them talking to me, having conversations. What do you bring that can help turn things around for Surrey? Uh, energy and you know now I'm a little older so li a little leadership and um, just just know how things go around here and um, try to get more wins and finally what's urgent collectively in order to get that win tonight uh, more effort we got to play we, we play in spurts we look good sometimes and then we, we look bad sometimes so just playing the full game of just in it, high energy and great effort thanks for your time Quincy thank you well, they started this quarter with eight of the first ten points, forced Newcastle into a timeout. The Eagles have now scored the last five, potentially seven if Defoe makes the threes. Those are exactly the spurts that he's talking about. Yeah, we if you've follow, been following third quarter of season, they haven't really been that bad. They just have these moments, these spurts, in particular last week with Cheshire. First half have a, had a phenomenal half, and then the second half they look like a shell of themselves, and Cheshire ended up coming back and winning that game. So I, I think Quincy will bring a steady head to this team and bring some consi much needed consistency to this franchise. Well, Donovan Johnson has walked out to the free throw line. Was it not Defoe who was fouled? Defoe had pulled up. He's, he's holding oh, okay. the back of his leg. Looks like a hamstring injury or something of that nature. So you hope it's not anything serious, but sort of see him grimace as soon as the whistle went so the substitute coming in for him has to take the free throws for him and you can see he's getting some treatment from the uh, physio 
and he he's not a guy too that often gets injured. I remember me sitting there on the phone like he'd been out the injured for a season. I'd look at him with such jealousy. He, <laughs> he never seemed to get hurt. It was it 19 seasons? You know, yep. it, it's you know you need a little bit of luck along the way with that as well. And Darius the is someone who's just been that durable body. So when you see him go down, it's a rare occasion. You hope it's nothing serious. Taylor for three. Martin over the back commits the foul. That's okay though. If I'm coach, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that foul. I mean, he's looking to. He's active. He's active on the boards. That's something that you know we can we can criticise Eagles for. You know, so far in this game, you played four years. Was it five years at Leicester? Your coach would never have been happy with a foul like that. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of other things like that. <laughs> He was never happy in fouling. Full stop. Everett. The foul. He's a little frustrated that that didn't drop in. He's going to have to shoot two from the line. Justin Everett, you can see he's so much more comfortable. He's only two games into his Eagles career. And look at him. Attack aggressiveness towards the rim. And as soon as he's entered this game, he's been instant offense for this Eagles team. for the Newcastle Eagles. This will make him the leading scorer in the game if he goes, which he doesn't, so you have to stay tied on that. Seven points in nine minutes. Good point per minute production. Martin with the mid-range. Never didn't quite time that, and Carey made a nuisance of himself. That's it, Dan. That's good energy from Cole Carey, and gets the deflection out of bounds off Eagles. Sorry, Scorchers will have another attempt here with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Bump foul from Everett. That'll be on the floor. Nice play there from Martin. This time going left. Went aggressive. Caught Everett off guard there. And he's having to move his feet. Just not fast enough. And I really like Ryan Martin's intent coming into this game. You can see the hunger, not only in his eyes, but in his play as he's looking to help get Surrey's season turned around. Sumru drops it off, but it's battled out of the hands of Johnson. Hamlet to the spin. Oh, that's nice. You got the lefty on the lefty there. You got Prasunbu trying to cover one of the best scores in our league. And Hamlet says, I do this, young fella. <laughs> He's so good in the paint, isn't he? Hamlet. Prasunbu getting to the basket. <laughs> Prasunbu says, What you can do, I can do better as he wills and deals and sidesteps around for two. Well, that pass was either too late or too early, depending on your view of it, because uh, Kennedy had the position, but by the time uh, Johnson bounced it towards him, Harry had got in the way, and ended up going straight out of bounds. Benzalou Biaro checking in for the first time. It's been very few of those miscommunications from that side of the floor as well. Just the third turnover from the Eagles look a lot cleaner in their execution than they did last week. Martin for three rattles in. Ryan Martin. Big bucket there. Team have been struggling for a little while and up he pops with that big three. Ten points personal for him. Four or six shooting as well as the offensive foul is called on Kennedy. He turns to the bench and holds his hands up and said, sorry about that, coach. Oh, Jamal Kennedy, experienced player, travelman, journeyman even. He'll know what's illegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he wasn't even close to stopping, was he? And we touched on that last week, how they've been, the referee's been making an emphasis on calling that moving screen call, but I think it's fair to say in that possession there, there's nothing to question. At any point in any season, that one's going to pull. Thank you. 
Matsumbra traveled with it. Yep, good call by the ref there. Yeah, he had his mind made up before he even caught the ball, didn't he? And that's what he's you know, been recruited to do. He's so good at going to the rim. He's a you know, British talent that's learned and developed his trade from Division One, playing with the Solon. And he's earned himself a, a ticket in the, the top league now and already showed glimpses as Luke Basumra attacks the rim with authority. Just not on that occasion. Scorchers leading by three here. Just over three to go in the first half. Hamlin along the baseline and stepping on it. It's a couple of times today you talk about Newcastle not really turning the ball over too many times. There's been a couple of them where they stood on the line and at the baseline. It's a weird part of the game now. You know, each team has had their run. Who's going to go on the next one? It's kind of been a, a shot here, mistake or error there. No team's really been able to grasp this second quarter. Eagles winning it currently 12 to 13. Dobbs, the three, back iron. Jack Dummy helped bat it up in the air, and Taylor says thank you very much. Jack Dummy trying to use his strength and his feet, and he'll shoot two. That's such a good move. Nice dribble, nice power move into the middle, and then a big spin to get back to his strong right hand. A nice pump fake to get him off the floor, and contact made another trip to the free throw line for Jack Domney and you can hear there from the sideline the coaches for the Newcastle Eagles yelling second chances and it just goes back to the point I made earlier about the energy and effort battle here tonight in which Surrey is clearly winning so I'm sure the coaches will have a stern conversation at halftime about the Eagles waking up and getting themselves going I mean, Surrey's only got three offensive rebounds, but it feels so much more, doesn't yes. it? it? I think it's because of those activity plays that you said, Drew. It's the, you know, crashing the boards and making Newcastle Eagles even deflect it off themselves or just being a nuisance. But it seems to me that there's, there's so much more, uh, I don't know, more than three offensive rebounds. Hammer. Johnson in the corner. Donovan Johnson knocks it down. And that's one thing Donovan Johnson can do is shoot the ball. The issue has been unable to stay on the floor due to his foul trouble. So staying out of foul trouble here early tonight and it's paying dividends for the Newcastle Eagles. Well, he's fouled out at the last three games. He had four in the first. He's got none here tonight. As uh, Basumbru gets the offensive rebound and one. Luke Basumbru. Good activity there, and then he has the confidence to just power that back up through. Missed shot here from Quincy Taylor, and there's Luke Basumbru grabbing off his own teammate to put it back in. Another offensive rebound, Dobbs, this time grabbing it. His carry for three. Short. Well, that's one error they just have not been able to get going. Two for 11 now. On the three-point line for the Scorchers. Carey picks up the foul, and they are over the limit, so it'll be two free throws. That's Carey's second. Best part of 89%. He's missed a couple today. Jack 
Dominey to the hook. He's good. Wow. Another tough move from Thorburn Jack Domney and scores the line to establish the bigs down low and Jack Domney with 10 points, Martin with 10 points, it's paying off. Kyle Johnson knocking uh, Gary to the floor, Sumbru with the rebound. Sumbru going the direct route, kicks out to Taylor for three in and out. It's just a damp patch on the uh, floor where Carey went down on the previous play. In all of that, Carey got a flop warning, by the way. Allows both teams to shuffle the lineup with 50 seconds to go in the first half. Not quite the 60-40 uh, that we had up on the board this time last week. 31 to 36. Hamlet. Those are the ones that you just kind of expect to go in the way he has scored this season. Usually automatic for him. Taylor. Nice. Quincy Taylor's got such a confident pull-up, isn't he? he? Likes to dribble the basketball to create space for himself. Very dangerous on the offensive end. Shot clock is off, so Newcastle can take... The last one here, Hamlet pulls for the screen. Hits to the corner and Johnson who's on the line. That's not what you want. Turnover right at the five seconds there. You, you had the ball in the hands of the guy you wanted it to, number three, Javion Hamlet. But a relatively good on ball defense from Luke Basumaru, who didn't give him an inch of space. Well. Lloyd Gardner wanting to draw up a play for these last 2.2 seconds to see if he can get one more score on the board for his team. They've obviously got to go, you can't advance the ball like you can at the end of the game. So they've got to go the full, basically 90 feet in two seconds. That probably gives you two dribbles or a dribble and a pass before the shot has to go up. So you could get to pretty much the three point line barring a long pass down court which Newcastle shouldn't really give up from that sort of position on the floor well, look, Coach Lord Gardner will know this is a game of margins and if he can somehow create something that will give them a, a better look at the basket with 2.2 seconds left he'll happily spend a time out in discussing that well you don't get to keep them might as well use it well, Wang is heading down to the corner. Everybody else is in the backcourt. Dominic at the halfway line. Carry to inbound. Taylor's got speed. Well, they've gone to Jack Domney to Taylor. It's a great play. And that will be after the buzzer. He drew it up well. It was nice play. They just didn't get any points at the end of it. And that's really good coaching. And that's what I was saying. You want to squeeze every ounce of opportunity you can out of this game. And Scorchers, clearly a team that can execute instruction. Positive signs for them. Well, positive signs for them. They've won both quarters here in the first half. 18-16 the first, 20-15 the second, if they keep on that trajectory, they're on their way to their first win. They do lead by seven at half time. And you feel they will be the happier of the two as a result of that. Might want to improve that three point shooting uh, just a little bit. Certainly will on the three point range, but, but contributions up and down. Lloyd will be happy. Yeah, I think so. And it's been positive play as well on both ends of the floor. I think they've showed a. Uh, I think signs of maturity as well and even new guys they don't look new down they look like they've slotted in there and I think they're positively impacting their teammates as well well they certainly have and uh, they've definitely 
uh, one guy who has had an impact with Ryan Martin with four from six shooting for his uh, 10 points here in the uh, first half. Let's uh, get some reaction from him. He's with Drew. Ryan, you just joined the Surge squad this week. Didn't take long for you to make an impact. Ten quick points out the gate. What was your intent? Make an impact, you know. Um, we had a good week of practice. We had a lot to improve on. And, you know, I've got some experience. I've been around the block. So, you know, it's time for us to get a win. And winless thus far, but the level of desperation is evident as you head to the half with a seven-point lead. What was the pregame message from Coach? Um, we know what they're good at. We know what they're not good at, and we want to try and force them to do the things that they're not good at. I like it. And how can you get up out of here with the, your first win of the season? Um, third quarter has been our Achilles heel. Um, that's normally where we get the majority of our turnovers, so we want to try and protect the ball and keep being aggressive. Thanks for your time, Ryan. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Yeah, Drew, bang on the money there. It's been a fast start for Ryan Martin at the Scorchers, and a fast start for them today. Gives them a seven-point lead at the half. Reaction and analysis coming next. It's been a tough start to, uh, to the season for Surrey, but a decent start to this game. And they've taken the fight to Newcastle. A scrappy, not particularly fluent affair here in Newcastle. But Surrey have a decent advantage at the half, 38-31 with Scorchers lead. And the numbers underpin the fact that both sides are under par offensively, particularly off the mark from downtown. Surrey hitting just 15%. Newcastle not much better than that. If we look at the points in the paint, this is a key edge, you think, Kieran Achara, 
for Surrey, 20 to 12, and there's one man in particular that's the reason. Yeah, I think young Boban, uh, Jack Donnelly, has really stepped up. You know, he's been giving his ball, and he's going to work being patient and getting some easy looks at the basket. Bench points under par from Surrey, when that's obviously one of the, the brightest sparks of this season. I was asking you as we were watching the game, are they one of the best in the BBL from the bench because they've got such a thin roster, so they're leaning on the bench more, or is it more to it than that? You know, the way I'm looking at this team right now, I, I think you know, there's seven players deep at this moment in time because of injury, and any one of those players could be a starter, so I think they've got that potential. The problem is when they get into foul trouble, pick up little knocks, injuries, that's when they get really thin, and that's where the bench can really start to deplete. Neither side, I think, will be particularly happy with the way their respective offences played in the first half, but there were some positives, and uh, Drew was chatting to him at half-time just uh, after uh, the first half wrapped. Ryan Martin, as Drew mentioned in his interview has only been at Surrey a very short period of time, but you wouldn't have guessed it from this first half performance. Oh, definitely not. He's came out with some confidence. He shot this shot last year with, with London Lions, and it wasn't dropping for him, but you knew he had it. You know, you saw his game, his, his experience of playing in Europe, but he is one of the leaders here. He, he, he does have that kind of experience, but he's, he's, he's moulding his, his, his position very, very well at this moment in time. We've referenced Boban Jack Domney. Very quickly, who stood out for you for Newcastle in the first half? Yeah, it was a really slow start. I'd like to see what Johnson had to offer. I think you know when he's on the court out of foul trouble, he's, 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 he's adding a little bright spark. And Everett, you know, he's been very, very consistent. And both of these teams tonight will be uh, certainly harbouring ambition to get their hands on some silverware. And uh, the BBL trophy draw took place a little bit earlier on today. So let's take a look at how the draw played out. Remember, we're at the quarterfinal stage and uh, invitations as well alongside BBL teams. So we've got some NBL teams in the mix. Plymouth facing St Mirren. That is the very definition of a road trip, I think, for St Mirren. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be really angry with that draw. I, I literally have five minutes from there, so I know, I know how hard it is to travel from the Lagoon Centre out to Plymouth. Uh, Derby take on Basketball Wales. How about this? The Gladiators versus the Eagles. That is going to be an awkward show with you and Drew post that match. It was awkward actually. I mean, the two in the draw actually. So yeah, it's going to be a, a really, really tough competitive game. What a draw this is for Worthing taking on the mighty London Lions. Tell us a bit more about Worthing because they're a fascinating operation, aren't they? Well, I, you know, I love what Worthing are doing. You know, they've got Zaya Taylor who used to be a, a London Lion player really creating a great culture there, bringing players like Orlin Jackman and Andre Arasol into that mix. They've got a really strong squad in the top of the NBL gets to against the top of the BBL, a really interesting affair. Now, you can't ever look at a knockout tournament and say there are straightforward games per se, but Plymouth will look at that draw and think it's pretty favourable, won't they? They have to look at it and say it's favourable, but at the same time, you cannot take anything for granted. We, we saw last last year the likes of Derby, you know, Thames, making a big, big push, so Plymouth have to be on, on the ball. Let's take a look at the bottom half of the draw, then another all-BBL affair as Bristol take on Surrey. Cheshire play the Nottingham Hoods. Is this the tie of the round, though? Here in the Giants against the Riders. I'm sure both coaches will be looking and saying, why us in the first round? <laughs> that is a really, really tough, tough game. And then wrapping it up in the bottom half of the draw, Sheffield take on the Thames Valley Cavaliers. So who do you fancy for the trophy? We've talked a, you know, a lot already this season. There are a number of teams that are quite closely matched at a similar level that will be looking at the trophy at the Cup for some silverware. Based on what you've seen so far, who do you like the look of? Gladiators. No, no, no. <laughs> No, in all honesty, you know, I, 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 love, I love the trophy. I, I think it's, it's such an open, you never know what's going to expect. But at the same time, London Lions, you know, if, they, if they're clicking the way they should be, uh, I, I expect London to win. OK, uh, that's the quarterfinal draw. Remember, all uh, the action will be building up to the big final in March, which we're going to have live right here on Sky Sports from Glasgow. And if you want to find out more about uh, the quarterfinal draw, head on over to the BBL website. Now, big man, are you ready? I am ready to go. Time, time for the plays of the week. David Sloan pushing the ball down the floor, hangs in the air. What a finish! Great finish by Sloan. Chewing up some clock here. Is he going to find a way to the basket? Kicks it through. 
Rearranging another and one play from Saeed Nelson. Great player off the dribble here. Gets the mismatch with the taller seven footer. Hezzy throws the ball out in front of him. And again, beautiful play from Saeed Nelson. Hamlet throwing the alley oop and Kennedy with authority. Wow, it was a behind the back dribble first and then high. Flowing shot for Jamel Kennedy for the dunk finish. Still four points. Wow! Oh! The spin baseline and, and the dandy footwork and just yeah. the whirling dervish and Wow. Oh, what a pass. What a pass. What a dunk. Look at the pass right on point. And Dirk Williams takes flight and throws that one down. Now, our production team have uh, named Dirk Williams as player of the week, but uh, you beg to differ this week. They have to work harder. You know, that production team... My play of the week was Taj Green. Anything with green in it is going to be play of the week. That that play was absolutely disgusting. Do you know what? It's quite possible that when we get to plays of the season, what is the over-under on how many Taj Green's going to have in the top ten plays <laughs> yeah, of the green, season? A green, the green scene. I think at least six <laughs> is the over-under right now. All right, then. Game on here in Newcastle. Surrey battling for their first win of the season. And they've got the edge at the half. 38-31 Surrey lead. Second half action from Newcastle. Coming your way. We're about to get back underway here in Newcastle. An expecting crowd looking for back-to-back -back wins, but the Eagles have got their work cut out. It's a seven-point deficit. Sorry, have the lead. Let's get back to Ant and Dan. Thank you very much, Nat. It was interesting 
in the interview that uh, Ryan uh, Martin gave there. He said, third quarter is our back. Oh, it's almost stolen away. He said, third quarter is our back order, which bear in mind, this is his first game. It means uh, he knows they've talked about it as Kennedy fires up the three. An interesting Surrey have lost six of the seven third quarters they've played this season. Lost five of them by 11 or more points. Wow, that's hard to lose a quarter by 11 points as well. The Cheshire won the other week. They lost by 17. They were outscored 32-15. Well, they approached this second half with the same mindset they came into this game because it was evident that the level of desperation was really high. I think they'll be in pretty good shape. But on the other hand, the Newcastle Eagles, they got to get out of first gear. Well, they're winning the quarter now, sorry. 2 nothing up after Quincy Taylor makes the first shot of the second half. And that's been the difference. Quincy Taylor's just someone who can create for himself and create for others. Ten points personal for him and Javen Hamlet. Again, one of those plays that we've seen him make so yep. consistently this year hasn't quite fallen for him this evening. But that was great defense there by Kyle Carey, defending him without fouling him at the rim. Great defensive stance. Driving in, a lot of contact for no whistle there. Johnson got a flop warning in there. Martin looking at the referee like, kidding me, there's no foul? I don't think there's anything in that first one. There's possibly a flop there. Might be a foul at the end as well. But nothing given. So with your level two and you were going to come in there and explain the so rules I feel like they've done a very good job there there's no additional comments required <laughs> from me there I think you had all of the control Dan <laughs> it's, uh, oh, I thought he was going to shoot Kennedy he's hit the pass and instead and ends up turning it Defense. over Defense. well you touched Defense. on the Surrey Scorchers third quarter the third quarter for the Boban and jam it in Third quarter for the Eagles seems to be their Achilles heel as well. So what you're going to say is it's going to end up 2-0, are you? <laughs> it's looking that way. <laughs> Neither team can quite figure it out. I mean, look, we're inside the first two minutes. So we're all making our judgment really early, but still. I mean, I, I expect Newcastle, though, to respond so much quicker. They're the home team. They're down at the half. You know, you cannot wait for the game to come to you. Sometimes a game can just get taken from you. A third quarter, a game can be taken from you. And I think what I'm most surprised at is the, the lack of urgency so far of the Eagles returning back to the second half. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You can see it from the opening tip. And a team that's won three out of their last five games have taken a sip of the champagne and they're on the dance floor and being Larry where they should have told them <laughs> put the bottle up because we haven't done anything yet. Is Taylor in the corner for three. Run iron but comes all the way back to him. Drops it off. Blocked from behind Martin. Second attempt he forces it in. Well Martin had inside positioning there which means Everett was at a significant disadvantage so even the first attempt was blocked. Ryan Martin's just big enough and skillful enough to Put that back. And again, Kyle Carey sacrificing his body, getting on the floor. Those effort plays, those 50-50 balls. Well, Kyle Carey was frustrated here because he thought he'd come up with the steal. What he didn't see is the virtual uh, sliding tackle of Martin to boot it. <laughs> <laughs> see, there's that left back analogy yeah, again, Drew. Yeah. What I got to explain to you later. I'm gonna walk out of here a full-fledged football <laughs> enthusiast. Get you in the black and white stripes before the night is over. Here we go. Everybody, your head. It's Looking for Newcastle's first point. The second half of play. The second big three point shot of this evening. And Cohen, a guy that can certainly create for his team here and increase the points where they're 34 which is nothing like last week where they lost up 108 Everett bats that away out of bounds and the glaring stat for me as you touched on last week 
the Newcastle Eagles did get to the free throw line 34 times. Yep. And if you look there, they've only gotten their eight. So huge difference this evening. Deep three from Wang. Off the mark. But carry this time with the offensive rebound. And Everett commits the foul. Well, you said in the first half they were getting, it looked like they were getting more rebounds than were on the stat sheet, but they certainly have got a lot of offensive rebounds here in this third quarter. It's just their mentality towards it, too. They're all yep. going down, they're all hunting, and even if that foul wasn't called, Jack Dobney was yep. going to recover that basketball and put it back. And what makes it even more impressive that Surrey is doing this without four key players who are currently out injured, but they understand what this is. This is professional basketball, and as Lloyd says there, you, you know, you, you can't go too long without a loss. You know, at this level, changes begin to be made, so there's careers on the line, so Surrey is definitely responding. And that's where I would say maybe we have all jumped the gun here, or a lot of the critics have. They're 0-6 but they've had significant injuries. I'm talking significant injuries. They've played Leicester, they've played Manchester, they've played London. Those are the three strongest teams in the league, I would say, so far at this point of the season. So, you know, when you factor all that in, is 0-6 a, 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 you know, a, a true reflection of this team? I don't think so. Well, Andrew Lawrence played one game for them. Taylor Ergen Dengby hasn't played any games. Jalen Ray is currently out as is uh, Josh Deal. Still finding a way here. We're going to retake that free throw for a lane infringement. And that is some serious talent that sat there in a tracksuit. Those names that you just mentioned. Just a little over aggressive for the referees like and that's going to be his third personal foul he's the only guy who has got three against his name and he's had a really positive third yeah. quarter as well that's a loss for the scorchers having him sit on the bench for a period of time now and then Johnson going all the way to the back. I was just going to say he's doing a great job defensively as well as Hamlet only has six points. You're talking about a guy that's, you know, the fourth leading scorer in the British Basketball League. So huge loss here for Surrey Scorchers. Malton with a carrying violation. It's one you don't see very often. Got his hand underneath the ball and turned it over. Well, they start calling it in, in the NBA now as well. <laughs> start calling it the BBL. Oh, yeah. It was one of those in the 80s, you'd see it a lot, but in more recent decades, not so much. Kennedy to Johnson. Johnson has a length to the basket. Builds it for two. And Jack Domney didn't get there to get a defensive position, so he commits the foul. Good move from... Johnson there as soon as he caught the basketball he was in attack mode and then he has that ability to absorb the contact and finish the play and bad as this felt for the Newcastle Eagles so far this evening they're only five points down with a chance to cut the lead down to four and you see Kyle Carey there sat on the bench so this is a huge six minutes coming up for the Newcastle Eagles well they're winning this quarter now by Three, eight points to five. Surrey's offense tried up just a little bit after that opening flurry. Check Domney, double team comes. That means Taylor's open. Great room for that mid-range shot you were talking about earlier, Drew. And that was a great pass set up there by Jack Domney. And like I said, when Quincy Taylor gets downhill, he is phenomenal at stopping on a dime and knocking down that 15-footer. Speaking of 15-footers, Newcastle number 15 is pretty good at that too. He is, and he looks very comfortable in shooting that basketball. Nine points personal. Jeff Domney again, using his strength this time, but too hard off the glass. Oh, the pass straight to Lissumbro. Lissumbro just too hard. White keeps it in play. Oh, 
Dominic Dominic just bobbled it. Hamlet floats one up and in. Missed opportunities here for the scorchers and just like that, Newcastle Eagles have kept chipping away and find themselves only two points behind. Is Taylor at the elbow, back iron. Boots away from Jack Domney, and he's going to get a break. Dobbs has forgotten to take his shirt off as he comes on court. Yeah, this is an important stretch for the Surrey Sports because I mean, you're 0 6, and you've been playing as well as you have, and then all of a sudden you look as a two point game. That's when those demons begin to creep in. Particularly, as I said, the fact that Ryan Martin knows that they've struggled in the third quarter means they talk about it as a group. It's been mentioned. Even the new guy knows it. Here's Johnson in the corner for three. Johnson with the rebound. Wang. Wang dancing his way to the hole. Just forced that over the rim. That is beautiful. The ability to the control with the dribble and then that explosiveness towards the rim. Tough finish. Man, I really like Wang's game. Like I said, he just jumps off the screen every time you watch this guy play basketball. This time for three. I mean, that's a shot you'd want him to Defense. take, though. Cohen been hitting today. Two, three so far. Wang kicks it out. Johnson. Johnson. Tom's trying to follow. Hamlet. Rattled in and out, Wang with the rebound, and he is fouled. Frustrations there for Hamlet. Again, it's one of those nights where sometimes the ball just doesn't roll your way, and there's the foul there. Way too much contact there from Everett. And I got to give the Surrey Scorcher guard some some credit there defensively, as as I talked about earlier, they're defending him very well, sending him to his weak hand, which is the right. But then when he gets in the paint, they're not belling him out by reaching down, slapping him down, and sending him to the free throw line where he's one of the best free throw shooters in the league. Johnson. Johnson way off the mark. Mockford back to Hamlet. Hamlet. Great Yoris set for some room with the foul. Really good, wasn't he? Sort of brought that ball all the way across the defender and quick change of direction. You touched on that last week, and that's just a move that just didn't even exist during our day and you see these guys now the lateral movement the control in the painted area around the rim is just phenomenal to watch it's a prime example of the evolution of the game isn't it someone did that 10 years ago we're all screaming you can't do that <laughs> well it would have been called a travel probably the way they've loosened the travel rule over the years well we would have been like be careful your knee might yeah, fall out go. Go. yeah yeah Driving in, oh, that is pretty. It really is. It's the finesse and the power. That combination of just being able to switch on a dime. Nice play from him and Wang. Now on eight points. Well, with somebody straight up there, Hamlet gets his own rebound. Johnson with the step away at the elbow comes out to Kennedy. Hamlet underneath, and this time there is a foul, although Brissumbu goes down like he caught one in the face there. I'm pretty sure it's a defensive foul. 
Although I've not seen a signal yet. The referees are actually having a conversation. Let's have another look. It's a nice pass. Yes. It is a defensive foul, but he did catch one in the face. Mm. Elbow right there to the noggin. Had that happen a couple times, and Luke will be feeling that for at least the next couple of possessions as he laughs it off there with GB International, Ben Mockford. Well, interesting, the uh, Scorchers have gone with Carey back in the game. Obviously had that third foul, but Coach Gardner wanting him out there, presumably for his defense. You mentioned GB International, Great Britain, of course, playing here next week. Coach Stoodle will be in charge, taking on a pretty talent-laden Serbian team. Saw their long list of uh, 24. They got some great players. We'll see if they all make it here. And that's not including, obviously, the NBA. But boy, have we had the opportunity to witness some top talent come here to Virtue Motors Arena, in particular for the for Team GB, and we're spoiled again as Serbia comes into town next Friday. Misic and Lucic, plenty more besides. Well, we're uh, checking that out if you're in the area. Here's uh, the summer. Dog stumbling over, turns it over. Not clean by Newcastle. Foul is called, that'll be over the uh, limit. And I talked about earlier the evolution and growth in Kyle Carey's game, and that's something that Luke Pesumbru is going to have to work on this offseason, in particular the jump shot. You can see how Newcastle Eagles is defending him, pretty much guarding him in the paint when he has the ball at the perimeter. But this is all learning curves, isn't it? It's the, it's the, you know, learn by experience sort of thing, and no matter how much a coach can look you in the eye and tell you what to do, it sometimes Oh, it's what a block from Johnson. <laughs> oh, was not allowing that putback finish. Nice play. The summer of all the room in the world for three. Maguiaro in the open court where he's so effective, but Wang does enough. The summer is also pretty good in the open court to Johnson, who went up for the sort of court between Duncan Lay up there and didn't either, but was fouled by Donovan Johnson. I think my first initial thoughts were I think uh, Shaquem Johnson gets a little lucky because he lost the handle, but you can see that his body takes his legs out underneath, which, you know, it's a, again, a needless play. And I'm pretty sure Coach Doodle, that's where his frustration lies, in particular with Donovan Johnson, is because his fouls on the season come into this game, 19 points, 19 fouls. They've been fouls where he just haven't been able to get out the way. You know, so he's done a great job here tonight, being able to stay actively on the floor. But he has to get more consistent and adapt to the referees and adapt back to this league in the way that things are being called. Well, only two fouls uh, this evening. He averaged 3.2 fouls per game during his spell at Manchester, which is you know, not too bad. He did foul out. I think it was eight times. Here's Johnson going to the hole, and that's what he can do possibly. That's it. He likes to make up for his mistakes. He's done that instantly there. He knows that perhaps there's an error on the defensive end, and no better way to make that up than to score down the other end. And Johnson with the defensive block as well. Wow, perfectly timed there from Donovan Johnson. Looking to cap it with the three. And that doesn't go. He would have took the roof off if he made that shot there, but that is a shot that he can make, in particular from the corners. But a great couple of possessions there from Donovan Johnson. 
Dobbs with the miss. Ubiaro. Oh no, that's on Carey. It's a big blow for the Surrey Scorchers. And a little punch of the advertising boards by the coach there. Because he was 27 seconds away from getting through this quarter. And now he's going to have to sit down. But the word that we used at the top of the show from both of these teams was discipline. And that's just a play that can be avoided. So now, not only do you pick up your fourth foul, but you send Newcastle Eagles to the line for two where they can get their first league and a pretty good while. Well, we talked about the third quarter woes for Surrey. 19-11 they've been outscored in this period. It's now 20 to 11. As I say, five times they've been outscored by 11 points or more in the third quarter. Outscored by nine here. And they get one last score. Potentially tied up going into the ball. Ubiara with the foul. And that will be two free throws. Again, discipline. If you if you watch Quincy Taylor play, you know where his hot spots are, in particular the elbows and the free throw line. So Ubiaro should give him a little bit of, of a cushion there. And instead he fouls him and sends him to the line for two. Makes the first free throw. Now looking to tie the game up. Rims out. Johnson with the rebound. Five seconds for Newcastle to work with. Kennedy in the corner is Mockford. Misses the three on the buzzer. Well, the Newcastle Eagles trail by seven at the start of this quarter. They lead by one coming out of it. Outscoring. The Scorchers, 20 points to 12. Can the Eagles carry on that momentum into the fourth quarter? And the Scorchers going to get their first win of the season. Find out after this break. back to Newcastle where we are very much in the balance here the Eagles lead but only by one oh who 
did that touch last, it was uh, Ubiara. He did get a deflection on it. Just wondered for a second. Might have ricocheted. No, he didn't. Good activity though early on. Hands in the passing lane and Ubiaro just trying to make things as uncomfortable as possible for Quincy Taylor at that guard spot. Sombro. He's got a shoot here, stepped underneath, gets his own rebound and puts it back in. That's a smart play from Luke Masumbru and that's good defense for the most part from Ben Watford because he gave him that shot but what Ben Watford didn't persist to do was carry on with the play because an active Luke Masumbru was an easy putback. Ah, uh, Johnson with his first points in the British Basketball League. And that's a big shot for Kyle Johnson. Just for his overall confidence, you know. Especially going down here in this, to this fourth quarter. You know he's the guy that can light it up and get it going and heat up quick. Foul caught off the ball on Brisumbru, not wanting to let Mockford get away from it. See on the right hand side of your screen, he's just got his arm around him. And that's an important foul for the Surrey Scorchers, in particular for Luke, that puts him on foul number four. So a little bit of foul trouble for the Scorchers to deal with. Johnson drives in and he will shoot two free throws. And I mentioned that confidence from that earlier bucket that he got. Gave him a little pep in his step with this tight curl and gets to the basket and where he has to the line for two. Third foul on Wang. You know, I think this game is going to ultimately come up to who can get it going from the outside. You're talking about two teams that sit at the league average from three, but Newcastle Eagles tonight, three for 13, and Surrey Sports is no better at two for 17. Ouch. Yeah, not not good percentages by any means. And I think the problem what Surrey have got at the moment, you look at that third quarter, their production was way down. They only scored 12 points. But that was the quarter that they conceded the most points as well. 20 points Newcastle got. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a correlation there. Surrey Scorchers are only as good as they are defensively as they are offensively. So they have to figure out a way here to, to muster up some production down this end of the floor this quarter. But some brew. I think you thought too long about that three-point shot. Well, it's good scouting. You know, you give Luke Musumbru that shot until he starts making it. And they've given that all night. Kyle Johnson misses, but Everett gets the rebound and puts it back. Great heads he played there by Everett as we talked about doing the little things. Right place, right time. Where he showed he has soft touch from the 15-foot area. Trying to create for himself. Now finds a teammate for Sumbra. That is where he's super effective. Great play. There was a lot of ball dribbling there from Wang, but what the Sumbra didn't do was stay still. Active on that baseline. Nice dunk finish. Everett. And that's what his shooting can do. Wow. Draws the big man out, lets him get to the rim. Exactly. And Jack Domney, he has to respect that shot there from Everett. And Everett. Great heads he played there to use that shot as a weapon. Pump face gets to the basket where he goes for the 180 slam. Justin Everett is what Newcastle Eagles have been missing in that sense. You know, the play before, he gets an offensive rebound, put back of a jump shot. On this occasion, they can put it into him in the high post. He can create, make something happen, and get much needed points in the paint. Wang kicks to the corner. Martin sells the fake. He drives in, gets all the way to the basket and he will go to the line been really impressed with Ryan Martin I think the first half for him he was excellent I think him being out for as long as he has as well he hasn't played remember since last season so that adrenaline gets you through it enough now it's the the hard yards it's the I haven't played in a long time can I my 
my, my cardio, can my fitness keep me maintaining that levels? And he's still fighting away. He finds himself on the free throw line. Well, he played 18 games last season for the uh, London Lions. His best return in terms of points was 13 against Bristol in March. And two free throws here pushes him to 14. And that's a great point that you make there, and, and and Ryan Martin is the only one. As I scan the floor there, you're looking at Ubiaro Johnson, who's just joining in. Don, I'm sorry, Donovan Johnson, who's been in foul trouble, so he hasn't played many minutes. And then Quisney Taylor, who's just joined the team. So which one of the troops has the legs to finish this game off? So Martin with a BBL career high. Limited BBL career that it is. Most of his experience has been abroad before coming to the league last year. His Ubiaro for three, overcooked. And it's one of those where it doesn't hit the ring, it's tough. Here's Wang in transition, finds Taylor. Taylor goes up high, finishes the lay in. And with seven minutes to play in the ball game, Newcastle's lead is down to a point so coach Stuber wants to talk things over that's great vision from Wang as well he didn't have his head down head up and good run into the floor and a beautiful high off the glass finish from Quincy Taylor well it's not coincidence that Wang leads his team in assist and Quincy Taylor with the high flying Ubiaro at the top of the box is able to lay it in gently off the glass and force the smart student to call a timeout. Well, we talked at the top of the show about, you know, it seems mad where first few days of November we're talking about, oh, it's an important game, isn't it? Uh, but actually, as it goes on, does it affect, sorry, Positively or negatively, they haven't got a win yet this season. Does that mentality hit them or is it we're on the road, it's a free hit, you know, we played well at times. Team with nothing to lose. As I said, you know, I think their schedule's been really quite quite heavy with the top teams in the league. So, you know, is it really a, an 0-6 you know, team? And, and they've got new players that come in as well. When a new player comes in, that fits, it gives the confidence to everyone else as well. So I, I think that can I think that can happen because they were low on bodies before. Historically they were low on bodies. And conversely, Newcastle in good form, but going, oh no, we're only up a point. You'd see Defoe in a track suit after that injury in the first half. So he's not going to be in there for his veteran leadership down the stretch. Well, as we talked about earlier, those demons, they creep in. It's a long season. And for two teams that started off the season slow and that's looking to jump start it, any time any adversity hit, it's easy to, to fall back into here we go again. So we'll see which team is able to overcome that. Still a lot of basketball to be played here in Newcastle. One point separating the two sides. Hamlet down to six. Johnson for three. Big shot, Donovan Johnson. It's a huge one, and Donovan Johnson has been that guy today, isn't he? He's been the guy that's took this game by the scuff of the neck, whether that be on the defensive end or offensive end. Donovan Johnson, 16 points personal. Wang getting all the way to the rim, slicing through the defense. And Wang doing what he does best, which is getting to the rim where he finishes high with the left hand. Rubiaro up in the air, hoping that an option would come his way. It didn't. Numbers here, out to Wang. Back to Johnson, and he ties the game up. And that's a nice pass by Wang there as he shovels it there. And Johnson does the rest. <laughs> so he scored for certainly running the floor, weren't they? They had the numbers, and Shaquem Johnson, that's his first two points of this evening. That's a 12 and a half points a game guy that hasn't been producing so far today. Hamlet, and do his thing, get to the rim. That's a great play there by Hamlet, able to get to the rim with his weak hand. Surrey Scorch has been giving him that lane all night. Great finish. Well, on pace for the highest scoring quarter of the game here. As both teams are finding a way, and that's one of those, I didn't 
Oh, yeah, I was about to say, I don't think it's on Hamlet. I think it's on Johnson. Hamlet looks frustrated. He didn't commit the foul. It's Johnson coming in and unnecessarily adding to it. I think Hamlet's got him covered here. And Johnson just comes in and a little arm down on him. And we call that just walling up. As you mentioned, Dan, Hamlet there with phenomenal defense, sending him to Johnson. Well, all he has to do is put his hands up like the touchdown signal instead, reaches down, and we know it's a foul every single time. Doing enough to put Wang off from the free throw line. Eight for 17. Eight for 17 for the free throw line. Wow. How many points are lost there today for the Surrey Scorchers? He makes the second. They're a 68%, 68.5% shooting team on the season. And they're two for 17 for the three point line in there. But this is a one-point ball game. Yeah. <laughs> and a credit to that is their defense tonight. Their defense has been pretty solid all evening long. And they force a turnover. Here's Martin. Has the size. Trying to use it. Will that count? Yes, it will. And one for Ryan Martin. Wow. Strong move into the middle there. Picked the ball up. Contacts came in the continuation. Very kind there to Ryan Martin who converts. And that's great recognition there by Quincy Taylor to recognize the mismatch. Johnson, the smaller Johnson there guarding Ryan Martin. Ryan Martin does. What you're supposed to do in that situation is put your head down and get to the basket. And he converts the three-point play to tie, uh, to, sorry, double the Scorchers' lead. Oh, Hamlet goes the opposite way, sneaking to the basket, and Martin commits the foul. Hamlet is so mature as well. He's had not the best shooting night by his standards, but he's got 14 points, and he's been very positive of attacking the rim. Five rebounds and four assists to go along with that shift this evening. But that's what great scorers do. And when you know it's not your night from the three-point line or from the field, what do you do? Get to the basket or get to the free throw line where he's now attempting his 10th free throw of the night. Tied at 66. Four and a half to go here. Defense. Defense. Wang. Oh, that is so nice. It's his ability to change speed and then his athleticism, but then his length just scoops it through. Oh, play. And that was a very similar finish I saw against Manchester Giants Sunday as he avoided the shot blockers that they have down there. Just kind of leans back and finishes with the right hand. Hamlet trying to attack Perry, who's on four fouls, unable to come away with anything. Here's Wang again. He goes Wang to the hole again. Goodness me, I think the whole, everyone in this building thought there was going to be an explosive dunk there, but Wang does the sensible and conservative thing and finishes the play. Everett under pressure. And gang rebounding. It's Taylor who gets his hands on the ball. Sorry with a little momentum here. Yeah, we're starting to see a little swing and switch of confidence here. Give it Sorry, back to Wang, I say. Let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Martin for three. Off the mark. I really wish Martin hit that because I'm like, Dan Routledge, you're not a coach. Yeah. <laughs> Still would have given it to Wang, even if he did make it. Here's Johnson, step back three. Knocks it down, big shot, big, Kyle Johnson. Big shot there from Kyle Johnson. And again, all it takes is one as he picked up his first British Basketball League bucket a few possessions ago, and now has the confidence to razzle-dazzle and hit a step back three. And again, looking to attack. Double team jumping out of him, leaves Johnson open. He's fouled, but can't convert. Wow, Coach Routledge coming up big again. Put the ball in the hand of Wang. <laughs> it's a really good job of, I think, not forcing the issue. The double team was there. Instead of trying to do a step back, 
you know, three and two people's, you know, with, with two hands coming out there. He does a, a good drag in the defense away and passes the ball down low to Johnston. Well, Everett fouling out of the game. His fifth. Ended up with 13 points and six rebounds. Oh, wow, that's a, that's a loss to the... Eagles, especially offensively, with Darius Defoe being sidelined through injury. They were a little small now. I'm guessing it's Johnson at the four and uh, Kennedy at the five. Uh, well, probably the other way around. Johnson at the five and Kennedy at the four. Two point lead for Surrey with two and a half to play. Trying to get it to Hamlet. Knocked away by uh, Martin. It wasn't an easy pass. Five on the shot clock. Crucial possession here by the Newcastle Eagles. Let's see what sideline play they have drawn up. They've got a turnover to Martin. Good hands again. Here's Johnson in transition. And he wisely slows things down. He needs a bit of help here. And he finds it in his point guard. Although it's been Wang who's been directing things over the last few minutes. Wang has it a lane. Out to Martin. Oh, not quite. Wow. Good looking shot. Doesn't knock it down. And he does dodge a bullet there. Well, he will be fatigued. First game in. Hamlet. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Carey. And again, Davion Hamlet does what he does best, getting to the basket, in particular with his left hand, and fouls Kyle Carey out on the way, where you can see clearly see his frustration, but he tries to rally the troops on his way out. Let's go, boys, as he sits down. Luke with some bro uh, replacing him. Of course, Luke is on four fouls as well. The last thing, sorry, you're going to want it's overtime here. They want to try and get this done in regulation. Well, Hamlet, who's normally a very, very good free throw shooter, has missed a couple here tonight, but that one is good. Looking to tie it. Doing so. Defense. Could happen, Dan. Could happen. Defense. An extra five minutes looming large. Can either of them win it in regulation? The Sumber needs an option. Here's Wang. Six on the shot clock. Wang is going to fire up the three. With Sumber going after it. Oh, there's a collision there. It's accidental as Martin crashed into Johnson. Johnson got the foul before that collision for a push. And because the ball's in the air, it's going to be two free throws. Wow. Let's see if we can see it. There is it. Oh, wow. I think it, it can. I'm still not sure. Can't see it from this angle, I don't think, because it's there possibly. And that sent him into the teammate, and then it's all sorts of collision. Oh, goodness. The bad offense from Sorry. Ball was stagnant, stayed in the hands of, of Wang. There's no movement. Looking for an isolation play with time running out. What saved the Scorchers there was their activity in the offensive glass to try and keep that ball alive and get Eagles to commit a foul. That's Ryan Martin who will go to the free throw line. He shot 74% from the free throw line last season. 26 of 35. Three for three. This season he's a, a rare occasion on the Surrey Scorchers team. And perhaps me highlighting that is there. <laughs> they didn't join his yeah. teammates who Three throws at the moment for Surrey Scorchers. 11 for 23, 11 for 23. He makes the second. 
12 for 23, excuse me. Wow. Still not a healthy shooting percentage there from the free throw line. Carl Johnson drives in, throws it back, it was over. Donovan Johnson, but Hamlet gets it. Offensive foul on Johnson and his reaction is one of frustration. You've got to be careful in that situation. Just checking that. Well, he's still saying something. And a timeout has been called. He's fouled out of the game, but I'm just checking he doesn't get anything on the way out the door. No, in fact, I think it's his fourth, is it? Double check that. No, it is five, sorry, my mistake. The scoreboard is flashing four for some reason, but it is five on the stats, but he's very unhappy with that. Well, it is what it is, and we've seen what lack of discipline can do to you just seven days ago in this building with so many technical fouls. You've got to be so careful in these last stages of this game because it's minute margins, but also you're running out of time for to recover if, if, if deficits happen now. Well, we were talking earlier about how he'd avoided foul trouble, but he still ends up fouling out for the fifth, fifth game in a row, is it? Yes. There's only one game where he hasn't fouled out. We got four in that one. It's, it's his fourth game in a row of fouling out. It's fifth game in total. The difference today is at 16 points yeah. and nine rebounds. Yeah, he yeah. has been one of the most productive players in an Eagles jersey today, and that'll be another loss with Everett also fouled out and Darius Defoe injured. Well, this is the thing. I said Surrey don't really want overtime. Newcastle don't really want overtime now, as you say, with those three players not available to them. Both these teams will want this done in regulation. It's Surrey who have the lead. There's one minute and five seconds remaining. They also have the ball. Here Taylor. Uh, he has hit the game winner against Newcastle before, as Drew told us. His Wang driving in, Wang off the glass, and that will count. But Paddy Wang will go to the line for a bonus free throw. That's a huge play, and it's a patient offense from Surrey Scorchers. The ball starts in the hands of Wang, and it finishes in the hands of Wang. But what there was was there was involvement and there was movement on the offensive end. The ball gets swung back to Wang, and boy, he explodes to the rim. And his focus on the finish too is immaculate. Well, he started last season in Portugal. He finished it. In South Sudan in the Basketball Africa League, played very well there. He's been great in the opening few weeks of the season here. And he stretched sorry lead to four. As they're on the brink of a first win. Can Newcastle find a response? Hamlet drives in. Hamlet under pressure can't score. And there he is again with the rebound. Wang doing everything. Just trying to run time here. Newcastle need a foul. Newcastle have to stop the clock and eventually they get it through uh, Denzel Ubiaro and Martin will go to the line. Essentially a chance to ice things here with 22.7. And they've got to do that seven, eight seconds earlier, Dan. As soon as that rebound's collected down here, Newcastle Eagles have to think foul because time is against them at the moment. And you found a, a guy that is the, probably one of the few guys on this team with a healthy free throw percentage. In some ways, the difference between four and six doesn't make a massive amount because it's still two shots, but it does change them from twos to threes. And if you're going to miss one, miss the second on a live ball situation, but preferably make them both, and he does. And now a timeout has been called by Coach Studel as much to advance the ball as anything else because they have to uh, lengthen this game as much as they can. 22.7 seconds. They need two scores and to get the ball back somehow in between. They do, Dan, and it needs to be really quick. And you know, they've all got to be on the same page here. You know, in terms of whatever happens now, they've got to foul in instantly. Get to stop that clock. The only chance they've got of getting back into this basketball game is to make shots and stop that clock. 
And why not do it against a team who has struggled from the free throw line? You know, it hasn't been plain sailing for the Surrey Scorchers. 57%, 15 for 26 from the free throw line. So to try and put you at the, in situations where you're fouling those guys who have had those suspect you know, trips to the free throw line. Well, Surrey, who scored only 12 points in the third quarter, have scored 27 in the fourth. And they've actually scored more points in the second half than they did in the first with 39 but done it in a really weird way they were even in the first half and coach Gardner closing in on what would be his first win as Surrey Scorchers head coach his third club in the BBL he had the fewest games of anybody to coach three different clubs Is it to Johnson for three? Hit! Kyle Johnson for three! And a timeout has been called. They haven't heard it. The first timeout was called. And the players played on. What a shot by Kyle Johnson. And the Newcastle bench were wondering whether there might have been a foul in there as well. You've got to make shots. You've got to do it quickly. Kyle Johnson, someone who has been brought into this team to do just that. Responsibility was given. Result produced. I don't think it was a foul. His legs gone out if there is any contact. But that was exactly what they needed. What did they lose? 2.6 seconds and hit a three. And the interesting question here, if you're Lloyd, is do you advance the ball? In advancing the ball, what you're doing is baiting them into playing defense because they know if they get a stop with six seconds remaining, they've got a chance to come and tie it. So they might not foul you. They might play defense, and then you get a score, and you've taken all that time out of the clock. But the risk is, if you don't score, they've got six seconds to come back down the other end and uh, tie the game. What would you do, Dan Rowlett? You're playing coach you know what? this evening. You know what? I would risk it and advance the ball. I would risk it and advance the ball, but co coaches are normally slightly more conservative than I am. I think, they'll I think he will take it in the backcourt. Risk. No, he takes it in the front court. So Newcastle now, do they change strategy? Because they would have been in foul mode. And now they think we don't have to foul it. I mean, look, Dan, it's still 40. Let's just say you decide not to foul. There's still a lot of time that's went off the clock. Yeah. It's Martin too bad. The thing you've got to do still is get the ball in and then run the clock. You can't turn it over here. Got to get it in! Oh, the foul is called. Well, is that an unsportsmanlike foul? Had the pass gone? No, it's two shots. Had the pass gone? If the pass hasn't gone into bounds, it's automatically an unsportsmanlike in the last two minutes. Let's have a look. Oh, it's on the pass. It's on the pass. That's the right call. That was every single millisecond. Yeah, five five seconds. So Wang needs at least one hit. Two for four so far. He makes the first, and that takes all the pressure off. Because if you're going to miss, miss the second, and it's a live ball situation. Dobbs or Martin might get in there. But again, making his option number one. And he misses it. Newcastle off the ball. But they're down four. They need a quick score. Johnson to Kennedy for three. He misses it. Johnson with the rebound. It's a scramble. Surrey have the ball. And Surrey are away. And Surrey are going to get their first win of the season. Wow, the desperation there of the Newcastle Eagles. They just weren't able to recover the ball back again after that missed shot. Well, Dobbs will go to the line. Many of the Eagles fans behind us are heading to the exits. And, um, this one is basically done. The only thing, the only way Surrey can lose this here is by doing something stupid and committing a foul on a three-point shot. It's the only way. <laughs> These athletes have been running for the last two hours. Hudson Jones in short supply. Not just the muscles, but the brain as well. This is where errors happen. This is where mistakes happen. 
Well, they can't really blow it now. It's five points. But Coach Stuckel has called the timeout and in part to advance the ball. And again, they're going to have to do something similar to last time. Hopefully get a four-point play instead of a, a, a three-pointer. And, and then hope somehow, sorry, mistakenly inbound the ball to them and allow them to to, to, to win the game or tie it up. Well, a quick three here makes it a two-point game, doesn't it? A quick foul. It's Again, it's still a nervous trip for that individual to go to the free throw line. There's still time. I am optimistic that there's still time to make a comeback here. 6.2 seconds left. The only way that Newcastle can win or force overtime is by making a score and a, turn out, a turnover on the inbound. There's no way if they foul them and they shoot free throws with the seconds that will have gone off for the three and the foul to then run, I mean, unless they throw it from under their own basket. Yeah, but you've seen you, that you know what? There'll be Surrey fans at home watching this, having stressed through the first part of the season and all of last season when wins were hard to come by, who will be still envisaging ways. Well, it has to be a very, very quick three for the Newcastle Eagles to keep any of that alive. They need to get it in. Johnson, not really got time for a dribble, misses the three, and that will do it. The Surrey Scorchers have had to wait, but they finally have a win on the board. They've come up to Newcastle, and they've beaten the Eagles with a 29-point fourth quarter to win by five. It's a big win as well, Dan. It's always difficult to get these Ws on the road, and Surrey Scorchers have came up here. They came up here with a positive mentality. New players in the mix. Ryan Martin, I thought, was huge today. Positive effect on his teammate, Bowman Jack Domney. But I think what that did is it brought confidence to the group. You saw there, Piedet Wang show up in the second half. He was a lot bigger. He was a lot more influential than he was in the first half. And Quincy Taylor, I think he's been that massive piece they've been missing. That constant control from the point guard position. Well, Martin gave them 20 points, a lot of it in the first half. But this guy down the stretch took over the game, Paddy and Wang. I mean, absolutely phenomenal control of the game, the way he attacks, the multiple ways he can finish. 18 points, nine rebounds, five assists, really stuffed the stat sheet. It was excellent, and it's not just the high octane, excellent, you know, exciting plays he makes. I thought he was mature. I thought he made the right play when he was double teamed. He made the right passes. He was the finisher. And if you notice, Dan, you caught it. The ball was in his hands a lot down the stretch. Well, it certainly was in his hands, and it was the best place for the Scorchers to have it because he was able to slice repeatedly through the uh, defense and to get to the rim and was so clutch to get his team over the line and that first victory. And we have him now. He is with Drew. Thanks, Dan. Patty and Wang, after heading into the halftime with the league, the third quarter almost caught you again. How were you able to weather the storm? Uh, we just wanted to refocus after the third quarter. Um, you know, the first half we played really well, moving the ball, getting the good shots, and we just wanted to replicate that. And how about that composure shown down the stretch? When did you know you needed to take this game over? Uh, when it got tight, I just got in a mode, and I just had to, I said, we're leaving with a win. Well, that mode finished you with 18 points, nine rebounds, five assists. How does it feel to finally get that monkey off your back? I mean, it feels good. You know, it's just winning is contagious, and hopefully we move on and we keep going to the next one. Well, speaking with, about winning, anybody with a cool name is yours. Wang enjoys to go, enjoy, deserve to go celebrate that. Thank you. Appreciate it. They struggled in the third quarter, sorry, just 11 points, but they came alive in the fourth. And Paddy at Wang, our MVP, was the fire starter, wasn't he, Kieran? A really good. Not definitely, he played a great game. You know, moved the ball. You know, I was really impressed. I know, I know his ability to score different angles, but his passing ability as well. You know, he, his, his head was always up. He knew he could get these spots, especially in that fourth quarter. And it was a great game to watch the calmness and coolness of him as a player. And a credit to Surrey defensively as well, because they kept Javion Hamlet relatively quiet. 
No, I, you know, I was really impressed with Kyle Carey, Basumbra, they did a good job, you know, they managed their fouls. I was a little bit worried in that fourth quarter, they both of them were in four fouls, but they did a way to disrupt him, and he didn't get the same rhythm, he had to earn everything at the free throw line tonight. Yeah, it's interesting, because we thought the foul trouble, as you suggest, would have been a real problem for Sorry, but it turned out to be perhaps a fatal blow for Newcastle. So unfortunate from a Newcastle perspective, you know, they were, they were finally getting some rhythm, uh, Donovan Johnson really stepped up, was getting the buckets, Everett was scoring as well and both of them filled out with a few minutes to go and that, that to me that turned the game okay sorry I've got their first win of the season they are up and running I'm sure that means they have a very happy head coach right now Lloyd Gardner is courtside with Drew coach the only team in the BBL without a win but your team finds a way on the road to the ascending Newcastle Eagles sum up that performance yeah I I mean, delighted. I thought last few games we'd showed lots of grit, lots of determination, perhaps without some quality. Again, you know, today it would have been nice if we could have uh, taken the lead we had early in the game, kind of finished it off. But, but yeah, I can't knock my guys for the effort, you know, continue to fight, and then hopefully this will kickstart us for the season. And the third quarter has been well documented, but you guys found a way. What turned this game around in the fourth? I, well, I, I don't know about in the fourth, but turnovers I haven't seen, but we're way down on turnovers. I know that off the top of my head. That's been, you know, a huge Achilles heel for us. Um, you know, defensively, we've been pretty good at times, but turnovers have, have really skewed our numbers because we've been turning the ball over, giving the other team transition baskets, easy stuff. So, yeah, for us to look after the ball is, is a big one. And finally, we know the impact of Wayne, but just talk about the instant impact of Ryan Martin. Yeah, I mean, Ryan for lots of reasons. Um, his leadership is, is probably the biggest thing right now. Obviously, he's a tremendous player. You know, he's versatile. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. He plays really hard. But for us right now, the you know the heart of our team has been taken out without with all of our injuries with Andrew, with Teo, um, with Josh, with with Jalen all out. So so Ryan's been able to come in and you know be a calming influence alongside Quincy. That that you could see the impact of that today. Coach, phenomenal job. Enjoy that one. Yeah, yeah I will. Don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> so. A huge win for them. What will the players be telling themselves now in the immediate aftermath who have landed their first win of the season? I think getting that monkey off their back is obviously it's, it's a relief. You know, they, 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 they believed in themselves. They just haven't found a way to do it. But now all of a sudden it's now kind of kind of refocusing and saying, like, OK, what did we do well? You know, the shooting tonight was quite, quite poor from three. Yeah, let's talk about that. So two out of 20 from downtown, 43% from the floor. They barely were over 50% from the free throw line. I mean, they didn't have to make it hard for themselves tonight. Yeah, and to be fair, the way they played tonight, I don't think it would be enough to win many games in the BBL. But the, the fact is, when I'm looking at the positives, it was the situations of getting those rebounds, getting those big rebounds, making those big plays when it mattered. They, they're still playing with that grit, and that's the most important thing that they still believe. Here's Quincy Taylor, 15 of that Surrey total. He was poor from downtown like the rest of uh, rest of the Surrey lineup, but he was linking up so well with Wang and was electric at times. No, I love his composure. You know, he's he's, a, he's, a, he's now a vet. You know, he's. he's back with his third stint in the league but he can get to that spot to that mid-range jump shot and it's so smooth that hasn't changed and having having the ability to be able to get to your spot controlling the floor not turning the ball over that's what Surrey needs you know lose a big piece like Andrew Lawrence Quincy Taylor is doing a great job of filling in that role and coach Gardner was is saying how many of those key starters out for them so it's incredible really that um they uh, found themselves in this situation and they put in a performance like that to get absolutely rolling and get back hopefully kicks on in their season. And that's a big thing. You know, You know, I, I talked about them being underwhelming at the start of the season. They have had so much change, you know, and, and it's been a really, really tough, tough start. Mm. It's so easy to drop your head. But yeah. to see the way they were playing tonight, getting on that glass, chasing the ball, pumping up each, each other teammates, they, 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 want to, they want to play as a team. So that's a great, great sign to see. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, well, Coach Gardner, I understand, I'll be very happy with his players. What about Mark Stutel? Let's find out how he read the game. He's courtside now with Drew. Coach, after winning three out of your last five games and it seemed like the Eagles was just starting to turn the corner, what's the level of frustration for you? Yeah, high frustration, I think. And, and um, we definitely feel like um, there was some parts of the game that we could have controlled better. You know, it was an ugly basketball game. I think both sides would say that. Um, and I felt when it came down to crunch plays, you know, unfortunately we were on the wrong side of those crunch plays when it mattered. And you can point to those crunch plays, but it felt like at the beginning of the game, the team came out with a lack of energy and effort. What do you put that down to? 
Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, we had a great week of practice um, and, and I felt we tried to prepare in the right way. Uh, I, I felt that in those first few minutes that, you know, the energy levels weren't there. I don't think we were we were focused on the defensive side. Um, and then, you know, you look at the stat sheet at the end of the game and you look at the percentage that, you know, Paddy Wang shot and the percentage that Quincy Taylor shot from two, you, you know, uh, that, that they shot too high. And, and you know, we tried, to, we tried to work on how we could slow them down all week. Uh, and obviously we didn't do that tonight. Coach? Thank you for your time. Thanks. So who stood out for you tonight uh, on the Newcastle side? There was a few players that I was, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I'm good to see Kyle Johnson. He missed a few shots earlier on. But Donovan Johnson really stepped up and Everett. You know, I, I think he's been Mr. Consistency for the team. It's been able to find that way. Yeah, 16 points, 9 boards. He missed out on that double-double because he fouled out. But we're talking about dynamism and energy. He was showing that completely tonight wasn't he yeah and that's that's that you know it's a gift and a curse for him you know right. that, that energy it gets him into foul trouble at time he's looking to take big charges and, but it was great to see him on the floor getting some crucial minutes and showing that he can score so he's scoring the ball rebounding the ball and that's exactly what the eagles want from a consistent perspective it's an interesting point you make because you want that fire in him because that's what makes him the player that he is but he needs to temper it at times you think very much so and that comes with experience as well I, I think players who play with that kind of energy learn to kind of unleash that when they need to but there was some spells there that just were not needed you know it was just a little bit enthusiasm but in, in, in essence silly fouls. Justin Everett uh, another stand-up player as you pointed out and Everett impressed us last week uh, and was impressive again tonight again another problem for him in terms of fouling out uh, but what do you make of his all-round game outside of that? I think you know we talk about those points in the paint he just finds a way to score the ball. You know, he's, he's got a little mid-range jump shot. He can extend the floor, but he's, he's very calm and collect mm. down low as well. And that's what Newcastle Eagles need. They need to find a way to get him more touches and become a playmaker from that position as well too. Week on week, how would you compare Newcastle's performances? Inconsistent. That's the only way I can describe them. One day they look like one of the best teams in the league. The next day they look like you know they, they should be bottom of the league. So they have to find a way to string 40 minutes together. Uh, and sorry, where can they go on from here? With those injuries still looming over them, we talked about the fight spirit in the camp, but getting that win, what can they look forward to? You know, I, I think you, know, you mentioned it earlier on, Wang, it's contagious winning. You know, they, they can find a way when they're in games, they've, you know, they've been lacking in that third quarter. Maybe now they have a little bit more confidence to keep going and, and be more consistent in there. But for me, with the Surrey Scorchers, it's, it's, I don't know what to expect. Again, it's another inconsistent team because of the injuries, because... You know, you get Andrew Lawrence back in the mix there too. They're a completely different team. So I, I, I expect Quincy to kind of hold and steady the fort. I expect them to win a lot more games. They're, they're, they are better than one, one in six. All right, let's take a look at the play of the day. And it's that man, Paddy Et Wang, right in the thick of it once again. Yeah, this play here, dancing with the ball and his vision to see Basumbru to slam at home. That play was delightful. Oh, you didn't go the full. The full I, am, I, am, I am keeping that. Is it going to make your cut? You're going to override the producers anyway next week, like you did this week with the with the player of the week. Well, we're not here next week, Nat. So yes, oh, I yeah. definitely won't be. Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> we'll get onto that in just a minute. Let's uh, refresh uh, our memories in terms of the rest of the BBL results this evening. Big win for Bristol, 89-79 over your Caledonia Gladiators. They fought back the Gladiators, didn't they, in that one? They definitely did. You know, they've gotten after a really rough start. On the road, they haven't been able to string a first half together. Big win for the champs, 89-85 over Cheshire. And, of course, a reminder that Surrey get their first win of the season against Newcastle in our live game. Three games in the BBL on Sunday. The champs back in action once again. The Riders taking on the Plymouth City Patriots. Uh, the London Lions back in action again. Remember, they're battling on all fronts uh, in Europe as well. They take on Bristol. Cheshire take on the Caledonia Gladiators. That is a 5.30 tip. There's no game next week, as Kieran said, as it's the international window. We're back the week after when we're at the home of the defending champs. Wheeler drops it off to Walker with the jab. Yep, so no game next week because of the international series, but we're back the following week. And what a game it promises to be. The ride is starting to heat up in their title defense, taking on the Sheffield Sharks 7.30 on air for a 7.45 tip on Sky Sports Mix.
that's all from us here in Newcastle. Congratulations to Surrey for getting their account up and running. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye for now.